Welcome back, everyone. Uh, I wanted to clarify something in this video that you've probably seen already if you've looked at the lessons called Introduction to Solutions or Explaining Solutions. And that is the difference between dissociation and ionization. Uh, I find this is not uncommon, um, not an uncommon source of confusion or frustration among students. So hopefully this will clarify things. We're all kind of trying to be flexible during this time to see how we can learn this stuff. So I don't mind making a video on this going forward. So what are these two things? Well, dissociation was something that came about um, with the work of Svante Arrhenius, and that's somebody that we're going to we're going to learn about as we start to dig into acids and bases. Um, but what he noticed with a lot of substances, um, take for example something like sodium chloride. What he noticed with a substance like sodium chloride was that it actually conducted electricity. So something like sodium chloride conducted electricity when it was dissolved in water. So what was actually going on here? So what I'm going to do is actually go back and do a bit of a review of something we covered earlier. And right now I'm showing you the crystal lattice that ionic compounds will form when they're in the solid state. So I'm, obviously it's not to scale. I know some of you don't really enjoy it when I keep saying things are not to scale, but I feel like I have to say it. There's probably somebody out there who's gonna nitpick this video. That's not to scale. Well, you gotta be flexible. So there it is. That's, that, this is what we call a crystal lattice of sodium chloride. Um, and what happens as we add water is that the bonds break. There are bonds that break between these different sodium chloride, uh, sodium ions and chloride ions. And what happens is actually water molecules will, will start breaking it up. So we get water molecules heading into this crystal lattice. Okay. And the result of this is that we get, we'll get negatively charged chloride ions and positively charged sodium ions separated. And sodium, which I'm going to represent down here in green, although it looks like it might not be showing up on the video all that well, sodium ions are positively charged and the slightly negative oxygen of a water molecule will orient itself around the positive sodium ion. So this is positive and these are negative. And I might actually go back in and add positive and negatives to our crystal lattice. So slightly negative oxygens orient themselves around the positive sodium ion. And then the slightly positive hydrogen on water will orient towards the negative chloride ions, like this. So hopefully you can see the difference. The, the slightly positive hydrogens of water are attracted to the negative chloride ions, and the slightly negative ends of the water molecule, uh, occupied by oxygen, orient themselves towards the positive sodium ions. So what we're really seeing here is a the crystal lattice dissociates. That's why it's called dissociation, because they, it's like we're separating. These ions are separating. So if I were to write a chemical equation of this, it would look, would look like sodium chloride in the solid state turns into sodium ions and 
chloride ions. Right? So once we get the, the separation of charges and we have ions in solution, this is the, the stuff, the material that actually conducts electricity. Okay, and I, I'm going to try to make a video in the, um, in the next couple of days showing you what that actually looks like. If I, you know, if I have a solution of salt or a solution of some other ionic compound and I stick in one of those, um, you know, a, a conductivity apparatus or if, you know, is able to hook it up to a circuit, um, as long as there's a little bit of power, I would be able to see the circuit complete. And, you know, if I have a light bulb there, it's going to cause the light bulb to turn on or blink. Um, it, it will conduct electricity because there's these ions dissolved in the water. And this is, this is what ends up happening here. As I put this in water, um, there, are, there are bonds that form between the water molecules and the ions that made up the crystal lattice. Okay, and, it, and it's more energetically favorable for this forward process to happen. So um, it's favorable for these water molecules to separate the ions and proceed from left to right. Okay, so this is what we what we call dissociation. Dissociation is usually, um, you know, we're usually going from a, an ionic compound to ions. So in general, I have an ionic compound. turning into a cation, remember that's a, that's a positive ion, and an anion, and that's, that's a negative ion. Okay, so that's, that's dissociation. Um, you'll have to pay attention though, uh, you know, especially in the practice sets that when you're writing dissociation equations, you pay attention to the actual chemical formula. So I, what I, you know, I did this in a previous video. If you have something like, you know, aluminum, aluminum sulfate, and you dissolve it in water, you still need to make sure that this is balanced. Um, when when one compound, or you could say one mole of aluminum sulfate dissolves in water, it makes some aluminum ions and sulfate ions. So I'm going to kind of look at this compound and see, okay, what positive ion and what negative ion went into building this compound? And when I, when I separate it, I'm going to write those ions separately. So um, this says I have two aluminum ions, part of this compound. That means I need to have a two here. I need to make sure that this is balanced. Uh, here this says I have three sulfate ions. So you take the three and make sure it applies to everything in brackets that the three follows. So that means I need to have a three right there. So make sure that you're using brackets correctly when you write your chemical formulas and that you balance your dissociation equations. And remember, it should be, it's usually going to represent an ionic compound turning into a cation and an anion, all right? Now, not all ionic compounds dissolve all that well in water. Um, that's something that we'll look at a little bit more closely in the future. Um, but I just, I'll put that out there right now, just in case you're wondering. Some of them are really bad at dissolving. So, um, you know, and some are really, really good. Uh, you might remember some of this from last year when we studied precipitates. Anyway, so that was dissociation. With ionization, it looks a little bit different because what's going on here in general is that we're going from a, a molecule that has a neutral charge into a cation and an anion. So the clearest you know, example of this is if we take something like you know, hydrogen chloride. So hydrogen chloride is, uh, you know, at room temperature it's a gas, but if I put it in water and dissolve it in water, it turns into a 
hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Now, in reality, it's a little bit more technical than this, but I'm just trying to illustrate here what ionization means. Ionization really just means we're making ions. So we're starting with a neutral compound, a technically a molecular compound. So we, we start with a molecular compound. Okay. And we ionize. So when, when we're in the presence of water, this compound will ionize. It will turn into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Um, once again, this is something we're going to revisit when we study acids um, uh, in, the, in the next next few videos to follow this. Okay, So pay attention to that in the future. This will be a, remember, uh, a useful thing to remember in the future. Okay, So ionization, making ions from neutral molecular compounds. Okay, Dissociation, I'm taking an ionic compound dissolves in water to make cations and, an, and anions. Okay? Um, both of them result in solutions that can conduct electricity. It's just a different, um, kind of a different process that's occurring. Um, anyway, I'm sure I'll have to clarify a few other things from this. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, make sure you're doing the reading and, and the practice problems. Um, and as always, I'm here to help. All right. Thanks.